And in today's five minute tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through creating beautiful animated blobs for your next bubble app. Let's dive right into it. The first thing you wanna do as usual is go to your app settings general and make sure that you expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements is checked. This gives us the ID field in the editor we're gonna use later to add our CSS code. Then actually let me get rid of this so we can start from scratch. The first thing you wanna do is get a shape, put it on your editor where you wanna have your blob, move it to the back and make sure you give it a fixed width. And then second, grab the HTML element, put it somewhere on the editor. Let's open and close a style tag. This is letting your browser know that in between we're going to find some CSS styles. And then, by the way, don't forget to go to your shape and give it some ID attribute. Let's we'll just call it my blob. And then we go back, reference this ID. So ID selection in CSS works with the hashtag. So I'm going to write hashtag my blob and then open close curly brackets. And what I want to do first is override its current border radius. So we're going to write border radius. And then where do we get the border radius? Good question. I'm going to use the fancy border radius generator here. I'm just going to define some blob, copy this code, go back, and then copy paste this here and let's make sure to give this an important rule to make sure it is applied properly then let's see how this looks okay well we have our blob it's a good start let's see how we can animate this and i'm actually just going to copy paste a few things here to keep the video as short as possible the first thing you want to do is actually let me use the proper view here is give it some animation and we're going to say we want to have an animation called move. We're going to define this in a second with the duration of 40 seconds and use ease in and out. What this is doing is basically uh, slowing down the animation at the start and at the end. There's a whole bunch of other options. Just Google it. And what we also want to do is make it infinite. This just makes sure that it goes in a loop. What we also want to do, because I think this looks quite nice, is transform the element's origin. What this is doing, it essentially shifts the point around which the element is rotated. So we could have center, we could have top left, or the 50-50, which I think looks best for this case. And then we want to define the animation move that we have just um, written down here. I'm just going to copy paste this again and to just walk you through what everything means. Okay, cool. So we want to define the keyframes for our animation called move. And what we're basically doing is saying at the very beginning, so at 0% of our animation, it is going to look a certain way. And then at 38% in, so in a 10% animation, a 10 second animation, this would mean at 3.8 second, it's going to look some other way and then at 40 seconds it's gonna look some other way and then at 78 all up to a hundred this is the end of the animation and because we're going in an infinite loop we want the end of the animation to be equal as our start and let's see at the things that we have defined here one is the scale we can alter the scale so we're saying okay the beginning the scale is one so the size that we defined in our editor and then we're going to define its position that's always from the top left so that's the first values usually or always the x-axis so the horizontal value and then the vertical axis or the y value we can rotate it zero degrees means it's not rotated and we kind of give it some background color and then we say at 38 percent we're going to have a different scale on the xy axis we're going to translate it so move it on the horizontal axis, we want to have 80% of the viewport width, so it's going to move to the right. And on the vertical axis, we want to have 30% of the viewport height, so it's going to go down a little bit. We want to rotate it by 160 degrees, and we want to going to give it some other background color. 
we're going to define this for all our keyframes and by the way you can add or remove as many as you want the only thing important is that the first one and the last one are essentially the same because otherwise this is not a loop okay let's see how this looks refresh the page and voila we have our blob it's animated as you can see it's changing size now, well it's not very visible but uh, it is, it's changing color and it's moving across the page as we have defined. That's it. If you like that, subscribe for more, either here on YouTube or on my newsletter at bubblehacks.io and see you soon.